welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week we're going to be reviewing the Remington 700 SPS or Special Purpose Synthetic. So, why the Remington 700 or why do people still choose the Remington 700? Is it not outdated? Is it not replaced by better designed rifles? Well, I think that's what we're going to find out today. I think that we've probably come down to the bottom of it. So let's just start off with the price. The Remington 700 SPS in Canada retails around $900 Canadian. Actually, on right now they're on sale at Dante's for $850. This is where it kind of gets a bit more complex. The barrels can come in a variety of different lengths. So if we talk Remington 700s, I mean, they can come in a lot of different lengths, from 20 inches all the way to 26 inches. So this is a 26 inch barrel on the 308. So that's specifically this one we're gonna be reviewing. And as you can tell right here, this is not your basic boring Remington 700 SPS. This is probably the one of the main reasons why people buy the Remington 700 is because you can turn it into exactly what you want it to be, which is what we've turned this rifle into. This is what this rifle was meant to be. So there's basically two different kinds of people that are going to be looking for a Remington 700. So the people who are going to buy it just for a good, reliable rifle, and that's all they want, that's all they care about. And for those who want a rifle that's going to be built up into something that it wasn't originally, because the Remington 700 is pretty much the standard. So in terms of even custom rifles, they're all, well, not all, but primarily based off the uh, Remington 700 footprint. So the, the action is basically the same specs, or the externals are about the same specifications. So the Remington 700 does have the, in my opinion, an outdated, a slightly outdated design on a few things. For example, it's, its action is a 90 degree bolt throw which, I mean, we have 60 degree bolt throws, we have 50 degree bolt throws in this era. It's a 2021, uh, but they still make a Remington 700 with a 90 degree bolt throw. Then again, consider this, at the price of $900 Canadian, it's not necessarily out of the budget uh, rifles. It's still in that budget category. It's not in the premium. Once you start looking at about $1,000 plus Canadian, that's where you start seeing a few more of the, you know what, 60 degree bolt throws, such as the Tikas, well, for a heavy barrel Tico, you're gonna have to spend 1500 Canadian or about a thousand US. Now, another thing on it is it does have a uh, Xmark Pro adjustable trigger. It does come with this plain Jane stock, which in my opinion, they pretty much just threw in there just so they had a stock. So you could technically just go out and shoot. It does not come with a rail. So there's one thing I guess you're gonna need to write out the box. It does come chambered in a few uh, rounds. So the 223, the 243, the 270, the 270 Winchester Short Magnum, the 708 Remington, the 708 Magnum, the 22250, the .30-06, the 300 Winchester Short Magnum, the 300 Winchester Magnum, the 308, the 300 Remington Ultra Magnum, and the 6.5 Creedmoor, the greatest caliber ever known to mankind. Now, this one here being chambered in 308, uh, this is actually my friend's rifle. He bought this one um, when, when I was actually started getting into long range shooting and we figured out oh, why not. It's a pretty good rifle. Um, let's just see how we can do with it. Primarily, we were using the 100, 168 grain boat tail hollow points and in terms of accuracy's perspective, we were getting about an inch, an inch and a quarter, the occasional inch and a half and the very rare two inch group. So, not that great. And so for this review, I decided, you know what? I want to see just how good we can get out of this rifle. So I took it out of its plain Jane SPS stock and I put it in a Boyd's laminate stock. So this is a Boyd's thumb hole stock. This is gorgeous. It turns this basic boring plain Jane rifle into something that's beautiful. I mean, this is a head turner. When I was at the shooting range the other day, everyone was like, wow, what is that? And it's just a Remington 700 SPS in a Boyd's uh, thumb hole stock. And I mean, the Boyd's stock really makes this whole rifle pop. It's just gorgeous. So if you're looking at maybe upgrading your current Remington 700 or just looking for an idea of something you can do, um, maybe check out Boyd's gun stocks. They have a variety of different options. Just thumb hole is just one of them. They have some more uh, straight versions, but my friend, this is what he wanted. So I told him, you know what, let's see what we can do. Also, on this rifle, what you see here is the core brake, a muzzle brake, which, I mean, this, this rifle is not threaded from the start. And one thing to note about non-threaded barrels is, generally speaking, the muzzle brakes for them aren't that great. Mostly because the tolerances on the internals of the muzzle brake aren't 
tight enough. It's because they make them to fit a, a variety of different rifles so that they're not like a perfect fit. While this one, the Corbreg V3, um, is a slip-on, yes, but it's made custom. So you are gonna have to go on their website and you're gonna have to measure um, right at the tip of the barrel and I think about an inch. They actually make it so the internals of this muzzle brake are just, just enough so it can slip over and then when you tighten it, it's like perfectly on there. Now this is not a entry level muzzle brake. This isn't cheap at all. This is a good quality muzzle brake. The advantages of it is it eliminates the need for a threaded barrel. Right off the bat, there's no threads. We didn't need one. And man, this rifle shoots. And it's really easy to install. You just slip it on. It's a little bit tight just because they make sure those tolerances are very, very minimal. And it improves recoil reduction. So. Previously, before having this muzzle brake on, this rifle had a little bit of recoil. I was always thrown off target, so I couldn't really get my follow-up shots on. But with this, I mean, it's practically a 223 that is noisy as hell. Because <laughs> this rifle, with this muzzle brake, good muzzle brakes are loud. That's just, it's just a given. And the people at the range were like, what are you shooting? And I'm like, it's just a 308. <laughs> Let's start with the accuracy of this rifle. So the Remington 700, you know, they boast a lot, but I want to know, well, just how accurate can this be? So in this video, we are using 178 grain ELDM, so extreme low drag. Um, and I was running 42.2 um, grains of uh, Winchester 748. So, I mean, don't take my reloading data, go research this on your own. Um, and from my observations, my first three loads on this, 42.0, 42.2, 42.4, about six feet per second or something very close to that. So I went with 42.2, which I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I, I have it written somewhere anyway. So that's what I went with. And I noticed as I got to like 43, I was getting pressure signs. I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't do anything more with that. Um, and we were going at 2,607 feet per second. That is wicked fast for a 308. Then again, we have a 26 inch barrel, which is awesome. I mean, the longer the barrel for target shooting, in my opinion, is kind of the better. They say they're not necessarily more accurate. Sometimes they're a little less. But... All right, so we're at the range. We're at 100 yards. Let's see just how accurate that we can get this rifle to be. In this video, we're gonna be using the Axel earmuffs. So these ones are actually really nice because you can actually listen to music at the same time that you shoot. And they are also noise canceling as most uh, shooting earmuffs are. And they're really, really nice and comfortable. So, and with this muzzle brake, we're probably going to really appreciate having these on. So far, this rifle is super accurate, so yeah. Uh, you know what, let's get out to the long range. I, I think you guys are really gonna appreciate this. We are at 750 meters. It is probably the best weather to go out shooting. There's no wind, like, whatsoever. It's overcast, it's not too bright, so we should be able to see all of our hits or misses. Let's see if we can hit. No, still just low. Yeah. By point two up. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. Nice. All right. So that's at 750 meters. We are doing good. We're down at uh, about 7.7 7 mils up. From the looks of things, looks like we hit the exact same spot. Yeah, either that or it hit right in front of the target. Now let's take a third shot, just to check. Yeah, you know, I think that's that's a really nice group yeah. at 750 meters. I am gonna wing it for the medium gong. Oh, we're just, just off the left edge, like, oh, 
We were really, really close. I think this is gonna be a damn good success. And I think we're gonna wish we started at 900. Yeah! <laughs> so that is at 750 meters on an eight inch gong. That is pretty impressive for a 308. Because generally they lose a ton of velocity. Like 750, 800 meters is basically where three or eights kind of like, it's where they end. I mean, don't go watching Mark and Sam After Works videos because he shoots them at like 3,000 meters. <laughs> They're ridiculous, those guys. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can get it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I love it when a gun shoots. I was really hoping that one would be on. It's just okay. a bit low, that's the first one I actually saw. Oh! I think we hit it. Oh, you hit it. Oh, exactly oh. the same spot, beautiful. Okay, so that was a blast. I, I knew this rifle was gonna perform a lot better when I, after I did that load development and reconfirmed it um, and then refilmed it. I mean, you guys saw some pretty good groups. I actually did get a better group off film, but you know how it goes. When you're filming, it is what it is. It really holds a really nice tight group because it has a very low standard deviation in terms of variances in terms of bullet velocity. I didn't try any match ammunition through it just because, well, it's a lot cheaper to manufacture your own load for the rifle, to make the right load for the rifle. So yeah, um, this rifle is accurate. Uh, really great job in my opinion. Next, we have the barreled action. So this is a one in 10 inch twist with a carbon barrel. So it, this is gonna be stabilizing those heavy bullets quite well. 178 grains, it loves. 168 grains, eh, not its favorite. Maybe it's my powder though. You know, I'm not gonna try all the bullets and all the powders. This would just cost a bloody fortune to produce this video. <laughs> Already they're fairly expensive on their own. Um, and the barrel of action, as I mentioned earlier, this is a 90 degree bolt throw. The action itself is actually fairly smooth, not the smoothest, nothing quite close to a Tika, but it's still very nice and smooth if you compare it to, let's say, the uh, the Ruger's, um, sorry, the Ruger Americans. This is like butter compared to those. This is much, much smoother. Although it's a 90 degree as opposed to, I think they have a 60 or 70 degree bolt throw in theirs. Which the difference between that is, um, for one, if you have a 90 degree bolt throw, often when you're opening your, your, your bolt, and you're bringing it back, you're gonna nick your thumb on the ocular, which is super annoying. And then when you're chambering a new round, you're gonna scrape it on the edge of the ocular again, which is rather frustrating. Now, that does happen. It has not happened with this, this bolt because the bolt is slightly shorter. While, for example, with our Bergara, which has a 90 degree bolt throw as well, but slightly longer, I was nicking it like almost every time. Well, because this is shorter, I kind of have to squeeze my fingers in a bit more and I'm not nicking the ocular. And another thing, which I guess is a pro and a con, as I was just mentioning, is the bolt is a little bit small. This is like perfect for hunting in my opinion, but usually on a more target rifle, you want a more tactile, you want a longer bolt. It's easier to flick rounds in and out, which, I think you'd appreciate but to do that i think you have to replace the entire bolt which i mean then again that's why a lot of people buy the remington 700 so they can just replace everything that's kind of the second reason why people buy the remington 700 because you can put an awesome muzzle brake you can replace the stock and there's just so many options out there you're never not going to find a rail for one of these also one thing that we did not mention in this review is um the magazine so it does not come with a magazine it actually comes with a kind of base plate so you press this button and all your rounds fall to the ground all over the, in the sand, which is kind of annoying. And you can single feed quite easily with this and pop your rounds in. So yeah, you can, however, get a magazine adapter. Uh, for example, here is a Magpul one, which my friend actually modded his regular SPS stock. He basically had to do a little bit of Dremel work for it to fit nicely. And it basically fits like this. In my opinion, the tab for the magazine drop is so stiff that like, you're not just gonna be able to push this and drop your mag, it's not happening. You have to like tug on this and push extra hard and eh, it, it works. I guess it's somewhat convenient, but I mean, single feeding isn't too bad if you're just doing some long range plinking because you gotta let your barrel cool down anyway. Um, the trigger is another thing that we replaced in this. So this, uh, the, the stock trigger isn't bad. Uh, it's the Xmark Pro adjustable. So they call this adjustable, but man, they should call it the non-adjustable. So it's got a little set screw in it so you can adjust 
and it's supposed to go between three to five. And when I was adjusting and testing it, I only got between 4.75 and five. And I was thinking, is this screw supposed to do something else? And then I researched more on it and I'm thinking like, oh no, this is a common issue. It's a fairly common issue that uh, when you adjust it, it doesn't do anything or it does next to nothing. We actually replaced that trigger because it's heavy, it's clunky, but it does break consistently. That's one thing, it does break very close to where, well, wherever it's set, which between 4.75 or five, which barely makes a difference, it was breaking very close to that. So it, it's a good trigger if you were expecting it at a very heavy weight. But for target shooters like us, I personally love 1.5 pounds, which is why we switched out with the Kdex DX2 Evo. This is a single and dual trigger. I have actually never heard of a company that actually does a single and dual set, uh, trigger. Um, it's actually, you can change it not on the fly. You do have to remove the action from the stock, which isn't all that long. It's two screws, you pull it out. And you just remove a Allen key into the trigger assembly and you put it in another spot and now you have a single stage. So from the factory, it'll come with a dual stage. Uh, the first stage is like super light and I personally, I prefer a dual stage just because you get that take up and then it comes to the hard stop. And now you know this is where it's gonna break. Cause mentally it's nice for that, that pull up and then go, as opposed to just go. But in, anyway, my opinion, everyone has different opinions on this. It really is just personal preference. So a bit more about the Kdex, it's got balanced internal pivot points um, designed to improve resistance against accidental discharge if the weapon is dropped on the ground. It's also got great ergonomics. It's, it's adjustable shoe, standard curved or, for, or a flat shoe. So you can either have a curved one like this or a flat one. And you can also adjust it for where you want it. So every stock, every chassis is a little bit different. So having that option to be able to move that trigger slightly closer in the guard or slightly further out, depending if the grip is slightly more forward, is a really cool thing to have. And it's really well thought out if you ask me. That's not something I've seen on any other trigger. So if you don't know if you want a single or dual, why not have both? So next we have aftermarket support. Well, this I guess is where the Remington 700 really shines. If you don't know what you want your rifle to be, you can buy a Remington 700 and then turn it into whatever you want it to be. <laughs> the world is your oyster, everything is out there. There is aftermarket prefit barrels. For example, like, like let's say like this one, if let's say once you cook out this barrel, now 308, it usually takes you like 8,000 rounds before this barrel is done in toast. Um, and there are lots of companies that have prefit barrels out there. So if let's say you think, you know what, I want to know what a super heavy barrel is like. You can go out and buy a prefit that'll just thread right in. Now you still might need a gunsmith to thread it in, but you won't have to get somebody to re-drill it and do all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's pretty convenient to have. Also, you have rails galore. Every company makes rails for these MDT, which is usually who we go with, which is not, uh, I think, what my friend went with this, on this. They actually have a weaver style rail. Now, personally, I would say don't go with Weaver, go with a Picatinny style because the gaps in these are gonna be um, of various sizes. They don't, they're not set to a standard like they are in uh, the Picatinny rails, which is actually our 1913 rails. Um, so when I was setting my scope rings on this, the MDT ones, they were like really snug and I kind of had to like push them a little extra to make them squeeze through. So ideally go with, you know what, get an MDT rail, they're great. Next we have the stock. So we're not talking about the beautiful Boyd stock, which is probably the one you're gonna want. We're talking about, in this review, we're talking about the, um, the Remington 700 SPS. So the special purpose synthetic. In my opinion, this stock was really just chucked onto this rifle as a way to say that, well, it comes with a stock, now you can just go out and shoot, basically. You're basically ready to go. It is a comfortable stock, so if, you just, if you're holding it, it's got a nice flat on the top here. It does come with two sling swivel studs uh, on the front and one on the back. Uh, the, the grip is fairly nice if you're shooting, you know, standing. Um, personally, it's, it's not that great once you're on a bench, and I mean, really, a heavy barrel, generally, that's where they're gonna be sitting, is on a bench. Uh, also, it is not free-floated whatsoever. I mean, the barrel is like crammed into the stock. It is nothing close to free-floated. And that seems to be the case on most Remington 700s, is, is that their, their stocks are pretty flimsy. So if you're getting one, don't expect the stock to be great unless you're getting one that like has a Macmillan stock already because they have so many different versions of the Remington 700 that you can get a variety of different things. But the SPS stock is meh, it's like pretty lousy. So um, lastly is the warranty. So right now, if you're not already aware of what's going on with Remington, they've been acquired by uh, Remington Arms Legal Liability Company. 
So they're not currently servicing the existing Remington firearms or honoring any warranties offered by Remington Outdoors Company, which is the previous, I guess, owner of the Remington 700. So they said they're gonna do what they can to assist in resolving issues, but it doesn't look like there's a real formal warranty in place yet for now, so who really knows? With a company like Remington, I'm pretty sure that they are gonna pick up their, their lifetime warranty like they had previously and just continue from there. I mean, Remington is a household name and I don't think they're gonna drop that just so they can save a few bucks on a warranty work. So yeah, um, in this video, we're actually using the tracked optics. The tracked optics be five to 30, actually 4.5 to 30 by 56. Realistically, I would have been better off using my five to 20 because most of the time we were shooting, I was just using, shooting at 20 magnification. But this is a fantastic optic if you want something for ELR or long range. They have fantastic glass. They are a little bit expensive, but you do get what you pay for in terms of optical clarity. Uh, good quality and tracking, really good turrets, zero stop, all the bells and whistles are in there. Although you, you, don't, you can get away with the slightly more affordable 5 to 20 by 50 from Tract as well. So anyway, that's my review on the Remington 700. They are really nice rifles if you are buying them, in my opinion, as a builder gun. So you're buying this to keep the barreled action, toss out the stock, and go from there. The triggers are lousy. Uh, I mean, they break consistently, but they're heavy, heavy as can be. Um, the actions are, they're, they're fairly smooth. They won't be too disappointing. Um, after trying many, many rifles, I think they are at a very good point in terms of smoothness, in terms of operation. I think they're still pretty decent. So after so many years of being in production, I still think the Remington 700 holds its place on the, you know, on the gun shelf. I still think they have their place. I don't think they've fallen too, too far. They could obviously do better with that trigger. That is lousy. Um, but the stock, I mean, how much more can you ask from an $800 gun, right? This is an excellent value for those who want to start and then build as you go. You know, if this is your first gun, Remington 700 is a good option. You can buy uh, your muzzle brake later. You can buy an aftermarket trigger later, later. You can still make do with the original trigger. It's just not great. It's not going to help you. It might, it might hold you back a little, but you can still get used to it. Um, and an aftermarket stock like this is going to definitely make you stand out in the crowd. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, I have a whole list, a whole library of other rifle reviews that we have completed. I think you guys are going to enjoy them. Maybe check out that playlist. We have a lot of comparison videos between this rifle and that rifle. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.